Gilbert K. Chesterton once said, in everybody there is a thing that loves children, fears death, and likes sunlight. And this thing enjoys Charles Dickens. Before I tell you about the Christmas Carol, let me read to you what Charles Dickens himself wrote about this story. I have endeavored in this ghostly little story to raise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humor with themselves, with each other, with the season, or with me. May it haunt their houses pleasantly. Charles Dickens. To begin with, Jacob Marley was dead. There is no doubt about that. You will therefore permit me to repeat emphatically that Marley was as dead as a doornail. Did Scrooge know that he was dead? Of course he did. Ebenezer Scrooge and he had been partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge never painted out Marley's name, and so there it stood seven years afterwards above the warehouse door. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted old sinner, hard and sharp as flint. The cold within him froze his features because he always carried his own low temperature with him. And he didn't thaw one degree not even at Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Christmas. Humbug. Christmas, a humbug? Uncle, you don't mean that, I'm sure. What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Humbug. What's Christmas to you but a time for finding yourself a year older but not an hour richer? <laughs> Every idiot that goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding. Now, Uncle, I know you... Now, you keep Christmas in your own way, Fred, and I keep it in mine. Be off now. This is a place of business. Well, don't be angry. Come dine with us tomorrow. No. Caroline will be happy to see you. Why did you ever get married? Because I fell in love. Love? <laughs> That's the only thing in the world more ridiculous than a Merry Christmas. Good afternoon, nephew. Uncle, I'm sorry with all my heart to find you like this. Uh, Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, sir. Let me hear another sound from you. You'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. <laughs> You'll, uh, you'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose, Cresson. Quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient. But it's only one day in the year, sir. A poor excuse to pick the pocket of your employer every 25th of December. But be here all the earlier next morning. I will, sir. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Scrooge. Ah. <laughs> Christmas. Nonsense. Humbug. And while most of London was jovial and full of glee in honor of this Christmas Eve, Scrooge had taken his melancholy dinner at his usual melancholy tavern. And having read all the newspapers, he went home to bed. Scrooge lived in the chambers which had once belonged to Marley, his ex-partner, and as I have remarked before, Marley is dead these last seven years. Dead as a doornail.
Ebenezer Scrooge. How oh, now? What do you want of me? Much. Who are you? Life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. You don't believe in me? I... I don't. What evidence would you have of my reality beyond that of your own senses? I don't know. Then why doubt your senses? Because a slight disorder in my stomach could make my senses cheat me. You might be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a fragment of underdone potato. Humbug, I tell you, humbug! <laughs> Mercy on me, dreadful apparition. Now, do you believe in me or not? I do, I do. But why do you come to plague me? And why do you wear that ponderous chain? I made it link by link in my life, as you are doing for yourself on Earth. <sighs> it is now a part of my penance. And I am here tonight to warn you of a fate such as mine. But, Ebenezer, if you change your ways, you have a chance of escaping my doom. <laughs> you were always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow. <laughs> when the bell tolls one. Expect the next on the following night at the same hour, and the third on the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Couldn't I take them all at once, Jacob, and have it over with? Look to see me no more, and look to for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. Scrooge tried desperately to say humbug to the strange happening, but the word stuck in his throat, unuttered. For it was highly probable it was not humbug. Being very much in need of repose from the experience he had undergone, or shall I say, fatigues of the day, he went straight to bed without undressing and fell asleep in an instant. A few hours later, coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No. Your past. What business brings you here? Your welfare. I have things to show you, which are the shadow of the things that have been. Right. Walk with me. The ghost of Christmas past led Scrooge down the road which he had forgotten for so many years. He showed him a Christmas day in the past, which was a happy one for most children, but not for one lonely schoolboy. Ebenezer Scrooge. Do you know that boy?
Yes, yes, I do. It is I as a boy. Oh, I remember that Christmas well. I felt so lonely. My playmates, they didn't like me. It was because you had shunned them? I wish... What is the matter? There was a boy singing a Christmas carol on the street last night. I should have liked to have given him something, that's all. Shall I show you another Christmas, 40 years ago, when a fair young girl released you from your marriage contract? No, no! Because she discovered you had ceased to love her. Your greed, avarice, and desire for wealth had killed the love she had for you. No, no, spirit, show me no more. Leave me, haunt me no longer. Awakening in the middle of a prodigiously tough snore and sitting up in bed to get his thoughts together, Scrooge had no occasion to be told that the bell was again upon the stroke of one. Christmas presents, look upon me. Yes, spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I learned a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. This is the house of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. But he has hardly a penny to his name. I, the ghost of Christmas present, have blessed his house. Here comes Bob now with another member of his family, Tiny Tim. And a Merry Christmas, everybody. And there you are, Tiny Tim, right in your own chair. Merry Christmas, Bob. And Martha. <laughs> yes, here I am again. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Martha coming oh, to visit us. Oh, and how did Tiny Tim behave today, Bob? Fine. He told me coming home that he was glad he'd been to church, because it's pleasant to remember that the day is called Christmas, after he who made the lame to walk and the blind to see. Oh! Oh, a beautiful Christmas table. It would be more beautiful if we had a turkey, but we'll manage. Of course we will. See what a happy family your clerk has on only 15 shillings a week? Tiny Tim. I didn't know he was sick and a cripple. Mr. Scrooge, I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. <laughs> Dear, it's Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, when one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. My dear, it's Christmas. Very well. I'll drink his health for your sake, and because it's Christmas. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A, a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. God bless us, everyone. Tell me, Tiny Tim, will he live? I see a vacant seat and a little crutch without an owner. No, no. Say he will be spared. 
My life on the globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight? The time is drawing near for me to go and for your third visitor to appear. I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But lead on, I want to know. Fine young man today who asked after you, Mr. Scrooge's nephew, whom I scarcely know. I told him about Tiny Tim, and he said, I'm heartily sorry for you and your good wife. By the by, how he ever knew that, I don't know. Knew what, dear? That you were a good wife. Oh, everyone knows that. And he said, if I can be of any service to you at any time, pray come to me. He's rather unlike his old Uncle Scrooge, isn't he? If you must torment me, be quick. Take me to what else you have to show. I don't know much about it either. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. What had he done with his money? I haven't heard. But he'll have no use for it where he's going. <laughs> it's likely to be a cheap funeral. For upon my life, I don't know anyone to go to it. Suppose we make up a party and uh, volunteer. When I come to think of it, I'm not at all sure that I wasn't his most particular friend. For we used to stop and speak whenever we met. I don't mind going to his funeral if lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what man they are speaking of. Who is it that lies dead? the man I was. Assure me, I yet may change the shadows you have shown me. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. Tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Marley! Marley! Jacob Marley! Heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirit of all three shall thrive within me. <laughs> boy, oh boy! Yes, sir? What's today? What, sir? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? By Christmas Day, sir! It's still Christmas? And I haven't missed it. <laughs> for a man who had been out of practice for years, Scrooge gave a most illustrious laugh, the father of a long line of brilliant laughs. <laughs> <laughs> and Scrooge dressed himself all in his best, and at last got out into the streets, wishing everyone he met a Merry Christmas. Mr. Fred, come in, come Have you room at your table for some friends? Oh, you're very welcome, Mr. Fred, sir. And you too, ma'am. I only hope that our lowly feast is to your liking. Now, don't fret about provisions. We've brought plenty for all. <laughs> Merry oh, Christmas, Bob. Mr. Scrooge. And Mrs. Cratchit, for you. Mr. Yes. Scrooge. My dear, that's for you. Darling, for you. And you, sir. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, I don't know how we can ever thank you. Don't. 
and I'm going to raise your salary and help your large family in every way possible. And Tiny Tim, <laughs> I saw a friend of mine at church just a little while ago, a famous surgeon. You and I are going to see him tomorrow, and he's going to be your friend, too. Mr. Scrooge! Oh, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mr. Scrooge! Merry Christmas! Scrooge won his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. Scrooge had no further dealings with ghosts, but it was always said that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May it truly be said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone.